So one man we wanted to talk about in particular, um, I'm sure you were probably expecting us to ask at some point about this, but what were your thoughts when Darby brought in Wayne Rooney originally, like prior to him doing anything at Darby? Yeah, it was a marketing ploy. He was brought in by the sponsor 32 red, given the 32 red shirt, given the 32 shirt. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a marketing ploy. From what I understand, the, the manager didn't want him. It was strictly because we had a star player clause and we basically could get Wayne Rooney for free, sell a bunch of kit. We ran out of R's and 32s for a large swath of time and selling kit. It helped raise Darby's profile because all of a sudden we were on TV more and things like that. Um, and we didn't, you know, and again, we felt like Wayne Rooney was a little washed up, not because he was at DC United, but because we'd seen him at Everton. He was poor at Everton. That's why he went to DC United. But to be fair to Wayne, uh, he came in. Um, he came in early. Uh, he didn't have to report till like January. He reported in mid-November, so he was fit. Started playing. He scored some goals up till lockdown. He was phenomenal. Like Rooney was. Rooney was great. Like just rolling back the years, running the show. Came out of lockdown. Clearly wasn't interested. Put on a lot of weight. Had a back injury. Fit enough to play in soccer aid. Not fit enough to play for Derby, mind you. Um, and then when things started to go pear shape under Philip Kaku, it kind of felt like he was kind of forcing. He was kind of the cuckoo in the nest, forcing the other eggs out. And I think that left a really bad taste in my mouth. And the last season in the relegation fight, he had no real pattern of play. He was just kind of getting win. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't stay up because they won a game. They stayed up because Rotherham couldn't win three games or four games or five games in hand. That's why Darby stayed up. But this season, to be fair to Rooney, he's really changed my opinion. Um, I'll, I've always liked him as a player. And to be honest, as a manager, he's destined for a top job. He's completely changed my opinion of him in the last in this season. The things that he's had to deal with, he's de dealt with a 21-point deduction. He's dealt with uh, coming back to preseason with eight players. He's had to sign players on 4500 a week. He's had no transfer budget. He's had transfer embargo. He's not been allowed to play certain youth players because he can't register new players. He couldn't offer players new contracts, Phil Jangielka being one of them, Sam Baldock being another. They left, couldn't replace him. Um, he's bought, he, there were reports that he was paying for the away travel and bus fare for the, uh, for the team. He was also, uh, bought, bought, you know, like a drone for the training, for the, for the training ground and things like that. So Rooney's had to deal with so much in his small time at management. He's done everything with dignity and respect. We've had a protracted takeover now going on for nearly two years. We're in administration. Um, you know, the, there's fears that the club could be liquidated and Wayne is, been able to deal with everything, showing his frustration, but dealing with class and dignity. Uh, and to be honest with you, you know, I'll be, it'll be a sad day when Wayne Rooney leaves Derby County. I hope he can stay after the season. I hope we can get this off the field mess um, done and taken care of because we need to keep him because if he's able to, he's been able to mold a team that's in a chance for survival with, with a 21 point deduction, which is incredible. Absolutely incredible dealing with cast off players and just players that just obviously weren't number one on the target list. Right. We'll just put it that way. Um, and without this run point deduction, we'd be we'd be safe with all that. And we're still in with a shout of saving it. And it's going to be down to, to Wayne Rooney's management, his leadership and how he's been able to deal with it. And I can't say enough good things about him. I wasn't necessarily a fan for him in the middle part there between lockdown and, and this season. But, yeah, he's been he's if you ask me, you asked me at the front, Connor, what did I think about Wayne Rooney? I didn't like him when he came in. But now I'm, I'm absolutely on board with with Rooney and everything that he's doing. I couldn't. They, Darby need to keep him for the next two to three years because we'd be a real, he could really rebuild this club in a, in a very good image if he's given the time and resources to do it. Yeah, man, that yeah, seems I, pretty. I that. Uh, oh, you want to go? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think, uh, I think all of that kind of ties in really well um, about where we were going to go for our final topic here was, um, you know, this 21 point deduction that you kept kept hitting on that everybody knows about. I mean, if you, if you talk about Darby at all, everybody knows about the administration, the deduction and the phenomenal run that they've put him on. But um, going into this year, what were your thoughts? Like where, where was your mind? I don't think, I think we knew we were going to get a deduction. I think we knew we were going to get a 12 point deduction because we'd skirted the financial fair play or FFP rules for a couple of years. And, you know, it, it's, it, a lot of fans were, were funny about it, but I thought eventually at one point, the sheriff's going to come knocking on the door and you're going to have to pay the piper that happened this year. Uh, we were put under a transfer embargo because of these irregularities while the investigation was ongoing. So 
I think we always knew it was going to be a struggle. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday went down with a minus 12 point deduction that was then reduced to minus six and they couldn't survive with a minus six deduction. So you're thinking, okay, this is kind of, this is kind of curtains, but obviously we didn't start out with a point deduction. We started off pretty well with the season. Um, got a win, tied against Peterborough. We're picking our drill, lost to Peterborough. We're, we're playing some decent stuff. We got, we got the, got a gut punch there with the points deduction. And then I think the real turning point for this, for the season was uh, in September when we filed for administration. So that automatically guarantees a 12 point, uh, 21, uh, 12 point deduction on top of the other uh, points deduction that we had. So equaled up to 21. But then it came out how much we owed. We owed 60 million pounds, Derby County's football club, 30 million pound tax bill. They hadn't paid the ambulance service. There was this long list of derelict bills that they hadn't paid from paying for parking spots to paying for ambulances to paying for the photographer to take pictures for all these different things. And I think it was just a, I think it was, we knew it was bad. I don't think we knew it was this bad. And it was just really kind of felt like the Titanic was going down and no one was at the, no one was steering the ship, right? It was just, there was no one around. And the administrators came in and said, okay, well, we're, we're hopeful of being able to conclude this takeover deal that reading reports right now, currently, uh, as we record that, you know, they may be naming a preferred bidder. It may be an American. It may not. We'll see uh, how that shakes out. So the preferred bidder thing has been going on for a long time. They can't name a bidder. So they can't exit administration. You can't start another season in administration. You can only start one. The EFL wanted proof of funds. They couldn't give it. They, were, they threatened at one point to revoke our quote unquote golden ticket, which would automatically remove us from the league. We'd have to go into non-league football. There were threats there that we might be liquidated. There were threats that we might have to reform. There were there was a 40,000, no, 40 or 50,000 person march before a game at Derby through the Derby City Center with waves in support of the club. There's been amazing fund, fundraising efforts for our fans. So it's been incredible. I think one thing that this has done is this has put the fan base and the, and the, and the team of players, the squad of players, and I think the club, minus a few individuals at boardroom level, really a lot closer together, which they had really drifted apart during COVID because the club kind of went off the whales and everybody was just kind of drifting apart. And I think now we're a real collective group. And I think that that's going to be really good. But I think as a fan of a team, it's really hard. It's really disappointing when you, when you don't know if you're going to have a football club to support, right. Um, when the thing that you love most in your life could be taken away or, or not exist anymore. Um, it, it's incredibly sad. It's frustrating. It's, you, you feel powerless and helpless. I mean, I've had several sleepless nights. I've woken up in the morning thinking about it, like, you know, two o'clock in the morning, like what, what's going on? There's nothing I can do. Um, there's nothing any of us can do. We just have to sit back and, and wait. You know, we've talked to a few journalists, like I said, and they don't know what's going on. They can't get answers from the administrators. So it's just a, it's just a grotesquely complicated situation that hopefully that won't end anytime soon. Cause even if we get a bitter, takes a while to exit administration and things like that. So um, yeah, it's frustrating. Um, but that being said, the playing side of the house has actually been really, really good. We've exceeded expectations since the point deduction. They've really galvanized the squad. Although we, we've got like 23 players, they're all fighting for one another. They're showing some passion and they want to play for this football club. We haven't seen that from a Derby team in a long time. Derby's never been a soft touch with a big pay packet. Um, and so it's been really, really good to see, really, really good to see on the field. And, like I said, we've got six games left to go. We're in with a shout of, of, of staying up. We, we went on a good run. We've had a bit of poor form. We picked up a victory at the weekend. Um, we do have Fulham to play, so that's unfortunate uh, for anybody at this stage of the season. But, um, you know, we've got six big games, and it's the championship, so you never know what's going to happen. And, you know, I'm just so uh, I'm just crossing everything to make sure that we can get enough points on the board um, to, be able to, to be able to stay above that dotted line at the end of the day. And if that happens – be one of the greatest achievements. It'll be a Leicester city esque achievement for this football club to be able to stay in the championship, which sounds ridiculous, but when you take 21 points off the board for any team, I think they're going to struggle. And especially to, to be able to shout this late is, is phenomenal. So it's a bit of a mixed emotions all the way around. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned that it's, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to, to compare it to Leicester, but it really isn't, is it right? This is something that is, is unfathomable, right? If you think about it, 21 points, what do you need to, you need, usually it's right about 30 something, 40 something points. To stay I think up. we need four. I think 46 has generally been the, the, the watermark. And right now Darby would have 49 if they had, if they had the points back. So they would be theoretically safe. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely incredible 
uh, to say that we're in this situation, April 4th, six games to go. We're still in with a fighting chance. having to 21 points. I mean, it shows how crap the other teams are, but you know, I'm not complaining at this point um, because um, you know, we're in with a chance and the longer you can stay in it, the more possibilities that can become for you. This for sure. so, I mean, we, yeah. I mean, I remember when Darby were looking in March from the Premier League with 11 points, it was terrible. You had to play like two months of the season knowing you're relegated and, um, they were hopeless that season, but this season they're, they're putting up fight and you want to stay in, you want to stay in the fight as long as you can until somebody says, Hey, this is mathematically impossible. I've got to believe that the, the possible is probable. Oh, for sure. And, and you, you talk about it, right? You usually need 46. You lost 21. If you got the 46 plus the 21 that you got, you're sitting in third right now. That's, that's how massive this, this sort of thing is. And on a lesser scale, but people don't really talk about this as much anymore. Now it's a, a few years back, but this same thing happened in Columbus with the crew. Now, again, not not nearly to a, a larger extent, but uh, you talk about how you guys all came together as a as a group. You know, as a league, we kind of came together in this sense where, um, you know, Anthony Precourt tried to take the crew and move them over to Austin before Austin became a thing, um, and it it turned into this whole massive movement. You know, hashtag Save the Crew, and it wasn't just it wasn't just the Columbus team and the Columbus fans that were doing this, it was everybody in MLS who was basically made pre-court, um, you know, public enemy number one. And they came together, they band together, they, they, they saved the crew. They, they are able to make this happen. And then we move in and, and two, just two years after, or maybe just a year after they go and win MLS cup. It's a massive storyline that people never would have, have thought was going to happen. Uh, and again, not nearly on the level of, of what, um Darby has gone through this but in terms of MLS that is the closest thing we've gotten and it, it's very I won't say funny but it's very cool kind of to see how that that mimics maybe cool is not the right word either but the fact that it, it what you guys are going through and what they went through as well it, it happens all over the world so it's I, I just thought that was a really uh, neat comparison there yeah so sure. we've seen we've seen clubs do that over the time and I remember the crew thing and whatever. So yeah, it's really interesting how, how the game mirrors one another from different continents and, and different eras. So it's, it is very interesting. It'd be good to see. Hopefully we have the same success that the crew does. I, I am, I'm pulling for it, but if Darby does go down, how do you think it'll affect the club and, and can this still be considered a good season if, if they do go down? I think it could still be considered a good season. I think next year we may get another 15 point deduction as well. So that would make it even more, more tough. It's not, not completely out of the woods. Um, obviously the one makes the rebuild a lot tougher. It kind of depends on the transfer embargo. If that's lifted, if we're allowed to sign players, if we get a new owner in, what's the budget going to look like for us to be able to sign. Cause right now we've got like five or six players on the contract. We're losing most of our young players for free. Um, Rooney has come out and said that they need about 40 players for the first team, 23s and 18s in the off season. Signing 40 players is really hard when you have money. If you don't have any money, it's going to be that much tougher. Um, so, you know, I, It'll just be, it'll be a really interesting summer. Uh, but I think, you know, step one is to get this bitter name. Step two is to enter it, exit administration. And step three is to make sure that we have a Darby County for the future. And then we can worry about the playing staff when we need to worry about them. But I think the future of this football club is more important now than anything on the playing side, because we are technically, theoretically, it's not going to happen. We're not going to get liquidated, but we are technically on a precipice. So when you're that close to something, you just want that to go away first before you can worry about the other things. Couldn't agree more. Um, Connor, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? I think that hits all of my points. One thing I did, I wanted to add on just to, just to add a little bit of uh, extra support on this really being like on the level of Leicester city's run, just to put it into a little perspective, you had mentioned that Darby the season prior to this one just barely avoided relegation. So if you were to take that same perspective to the premier league, Burnley last season was the team that just avoided relegation. If you gave them a 21 point deduction this season, they're sitting on zero points currently in the table. And they obviously would be well out of escaping rele relegation. They would be toast. So the fact that Darby are still fighting for this and in, in the, um, the mix to get out of relegation is just so incredible. Yeah. I think we have like 20, we have 28 points, I think, in Peterborough, 26, and we had a 21-point deduction. So, you know, that coupled with the fact that we had an embargo with 
getting like cast off players. Like our starting center halves were Curtis Davis at 35, Phil J. Gilk at 38, and Richard Stearman at a sprightly 34. Like that was our defensive line until J. Gilk left. Um, you know, we got Ravel Morris and he's been around 12 clubs in 18 clubs in 12 years. He's played the most games for Derby than he's played for any club in his career. He's not even played a full season. You know, we, we've not had any loan players. We sold Luke Plange for a million. He got loaned back to us from Palace. So, yeah, uh, we're just, he's making it work with youth and cast offs. And I don't know how it's doing, but whatever he's doing, it's magical. And yeah, that's a good stat. And I hope, I hope that we can, I hope we can solve it because it's going to be a hell of a last day if we do it. I mean, it'd be absolutely incredible. Last season was nail biting. Last season was scary. But this season, this season, if we were to survive, I, don't, I think it'd be as good as winning, winning a cup, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'd absolutely. Have to, I'd have to agree in that feeling. Yeah, that's it. I'm getting I'm getting excited just thinking about it for you. And I have no ties to the club at all. So <laughs> I'm I'm with you. Um,